Hey, good morning everybody. Morgan SLV here, 421 2011. Gold 1504, silver 4610. Um, you know, I'm going to try to remember uh, and if you and if I forget, maybe you guys can put down in your comments what the ratio is. Today's ratio is 36.6 to 1. And uh, you know, that's kind of wild. Um, when I first started uh, purchasing silver, it was 77 to 1. Now, on another note, um, you guys might notice my lip right here. You never really want to smart off to your wife because uh, you know she might be like my wife. My wife's got a really good overhand right. She caught me real good right there and busted my lip. Just kidding. Shaving accident. Kind of went wild with the razor. Deal with it. As far as uh, you know, I have a lot of conversations. I've got one one of my one of my viewers slash uh, friends, or I should say it the other way around. One of my friends slash viewers. You know, he um, he has taken this stuff really seriously. You know, he has uh, purchased um, a lot of a uh, lot of food. Uh, he is getting. I'm not sure how much water he has. Uh, we've talked about uh, getting a dehumidifier so that we can uh, make our own water. He also talked about the fact that if he was to move to, like, say, Oregon or whatever, would I be interested in my family moving there with him? We've talked about all kinds of scenarios. One of the things that we went over last night is is what I see happening and you know I gotta be honest with you I've spoon fed a lot of people you know based on what I see going on because what I, I it's not that I don't give them the whole truth uh, but you can't you can't you know when somebody needs a drink out of a water fountain you know out of a water fountain you don't you don't uh, hand them the you know the Russian River to take a drink out of it right and so <clears throat> last night I was very honest with him I said this is what I see happening Two scenarios. One scenario might be uh, June, July. We might have a crash. They say there's a lot of things happening right now, where uh, you know things are so unstable that things could happen that soon. And you know, frankly, it could happen today, right? It's not like the government is going to call each and one, each and every one of us up and say, "Hey, by the way, you know, the dollar's crashed. It is no longer any good. Please make preparations." It will not be that way. You have to prepare first. That's scenario number one that I see that could happen. Scenario number two is I see a long, slow burn probably for the next ten years, where uh, we, we each of us, if we don't if we don't study up and become more flexible in our approach, will become weaker and weaker and weaker financially, and um, and then maybe after maybe the next ten, twelve years, we'll see a rebirth, you know, uh, and have some sort of a, a semblance of of uh, a normal, um, a more normal lifestyle in this country, where it will. I don't believe it'll ever be like it was when I grew up, or maybe my father grew up, because of the bubble economy that we were in. But I do see it, you know, not necessarily, uh, you know, on a downward spiral like it is right now. So, um, so I'm preparing for for both. But mainly, I think I think the 10-year scenario is probably more realistic. Um, I could be completely wrong. You guys are free to comment. You know, um, none of us have a crystal ball, but that's you know I'm kind of I'm kind of you know shrugging my shoulders, saying, "Wow, you know, if I've got a you know, it's different." You know, back in the day when I when I got in the ring, you know, uh, if I had a three round fight, you know, I got in there and got it over with, and and was was still able to walk on. But if it was a 15 round fight, oh my gosh, right? And so the way I look at it is this ten this ten years is like a fifteen round fight. Do you have the stamina? Can you can you withstand that type of uh, uh, rigorous behavior financially? And I I'd say that most of the people on the planet do not. A guy asked me this morning at breakfast, how many people do you know? How many people do you think even have you know this silver story down? And I said probably two percent. So that's kind of wild, right? Let me grab my paper here real quick. So that's kind of a wild deal when you think of it in those terms. What's going to happen with our economy if these fuel prices stay the way they are? Just think about that for a second. You know, we're topping 416, 418 a gallon, you know, on our way to like 400 or 400, 480, 480 a, a, a gallon of regular. What's going to happen? I mean, how can that stimulate the economy, right? I don't see that stimulating the economy. You know, what's going to happen when this Ponzi scheme ends? The Fed has interest rates at near zero, and that's why things have have kind of uh, you know puttered along the way they have you know as you know the, the government has the largest adjustable rate mortgage on the planet just so happens the Fed is the one that's adjusting the interest rate it's inevitable that we're gonna have high inflation I think 
and it's also inevitable that they're eventually going to raise the interest rates. So what's going to happen when you have when you have high inflation and they raise interest rates into that into that situation? What's going to happen? What's going to happen with you and your family? That's all stuff that you guys need to think about. You know, one of the reasons they're going to up interest rates, or the raise reason, is to is to hold down prices of commodities. And eventually, as uh, you know, and who knows what they're going to do with gold and silver? Look what silver's doing. I'm going to say it again: forty six ten an ounce. You know, I don't know. They, who knows what the government could do today or tomorrow? I just know that that the main thing I believe, the very first thing that has to happen is you have to mentally get prepared for what's going on. So I had about a two hour conversation with my with my partner last night and. And uh, you know my buddy, uh, my buddy, and and you know we talked about every conceivable uh, situation. And I, what I see is uh, ending up on the 20 acres we have out out in this area, and um, maybe maybe in the next two to five years being out there, and uh, and actually having a, a a lifestyle that maybe isn't declining as much as it is right now, but yet seeing everybody else's lifestyle decline, I'm not sure. I mean, I'm prepared. You know, we have a pile of metal. You know, uh, it's just gonna it's just it's just gonna be something that we're all gonna have to kind of watch play out. The other thing that we were talking about, we were talking about the the list of people that we thought we were gonna take care of. You know, mine's my my immediate family, my wife and kids, my father and mother, and and my wife's father, and that's that's about as long as my list gets. And it's unfortunate because there's other portions of my family who I care deeply for, but I've warned you all. I've warned all of you, if you're watching this, I've warned you all about what's getting ready to happen. Other countries are already raising their interest rates due to the fact that they're having rising, you know, their their inflation's getting out of control in other countries. And so, you know, it will happen here. When it, when it happens, we don't know uh, exactly. They're going to they're going to ride this Ponzi scheme for all for all it um, for all they can. I'm telling you to study up DaVinci J15, Mike Maloney, right? You know, Mark Faber, um, Rod Doglet. If you want to get some, some, uh, you know, get your get your pulse quickened a little bit. I think he's got a lot of get, good information. You know, those are just some of the people that I look into. Peter Schiff, excellent, excellent. And um, anyway, let's get on the joke of the day. Joke of the day is this. I don't think I've ever said this joke before, so I'll go ahead and see if I can remember it. So a burglar uh, uh, breaks into a home. Okay. And he's kind of, uh, kind of being cautious and making sure that everything's quiet. And all of a sudden, he hears a loud, booming voice: "Jesus is watching you." That kind of freaks him out. He stops and he's looking around and he's trying to, he's trying to focus because it's pretty dark and he, everything goes quiet again. So he kind of creeps around a little bit more and again, and that booming voice: "Jesus is watching you." So this time, he's, he's, you know, it's no fluke. He's looking around. He's looking around. He sees an over in a dark corner. A cage with a parrot in it so he kind of creeps over to that cage and he's looking in that cage and looks in there and he goes oh it's a parrot he goes what's your name parrot parrot says Clarence the burglar kind of laughs snickers a little bit and says what kind of a what kind of a who who would name their 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 parrot Clarence that's just such a weird name you know I, I can't see anybody naming their parrot Clarence he goes he goes I, I think your owner must be stupid he goes you know who would name a, a parrot Clarence, right? He said, "Well, the same people that named our Rottweiler Jesus." Morgan S. L. V. Out. <laughs>